which is organized jointly by Zimar, the entire association of Exciting University, supported by the School of Human Resource Management and the National HRD Network, Bhuvaneshwar Chapter. I take this opportunity to extend my hearty and warm welcome to Father S. Anthony Raj, SJ, Registrar, Exciting University, to our keynote speaker for Shittage 2024, Ms. Amrita Mazumdar, Global Head HR at Avatar, and Ms. Bobby Patanayak, HR Business Leader, Infosys, and President, NHRDN Bhuvaneshwar Chapter. I would also like to welcome our eminent panelists, Dr. Krishna Kumar Padi, Joint President and Cluster Head, Orissa and Miami, Hindalgo Industries Limited, Mr. Sudeep Patanayak, Vice President, Global Talent Acquisition, Everest Group, Dr. Brijendra Gupta, Business Coach, Founder and CEO, Brijendra Gupta and Associates, Mr. Vikas Dube, General Manager HR, WNS Global Services, and our moderator for the panel discussion, Mr. Anirudho Mazumdar, Executive Coach, VP and Senior Product Manager, JP Morgan. Organizations have increasingly focused on fostering green cultures within their operations. At the organizational level, implementing green HRM offers significant benefits such as cultivating environmental friendly culture and work environment, improving resource efficiency, enhancing corporate reputation, and boosting economic performance. HRM becomes green by setting environmental objectives and raising employee awareness through eco-conscious HR practices, ultimately contributing to the development of an eco-friendly workplace. Workplaces can become more environmentally friendly by encouraging initiatives that promote sustainability. Employers can advocate for reducing electricity consumption by encouraging work from home, reusing items like ceramic or glass coffee cups and bags, adopting 100% recycled papers, and opting for other eco-friendly cleaning products. The cost, is, it, is the sustainable practice sustainable? Are we doing enough, right? For example, I do. I think all of us do something like recycling our plastic, uh, you know, not throwing away our cardboard and all of that. But the question I think which still haunts us in our nightmares is, you know, is it even a drop in the ocean and is it going to make a difference? Um, I think in 19, I don't remember the exact, it was 2019, I think, when uh, Greta Thunberg won the uh, person of the year, in Time Magazine, she was probably the youngest person to win the Time of the uh, person, uh, person of the Year in Time. Uh, the point is that unfortunately, <clears throat> the burden, the onus of the planet falls on the young shoulders of the people sitting in front of me. Um, it's an onerous burden, a lot of things about it, and you could probably going forward blame it on your earlier generations like us saying that you did not do enough to take care. Uh, but the point is that um, there is no running away from it, uh, right? It is it is now or never. Um, so I, on one hand, uh, I'm happy that we have. I was very really, um, very surprised actually to when Shubhra told me that this is a theme this year. I was very really surprised, uh, but I'm very really happy, and this is being taken forward in a very serious way, uh, irrespective of what I'm missing, ROI or the outcome. And very coincidentally. Uh, last night, there was a message from our national president, uh, Mr. Prem Singh, who happens to be the group CHR of JK, uh, sending out a directive to all the chapters across India and abroad saying that going forward, uh, in all national HR network events, we will completely eschew any unsustainable practices, no use of plastics, um, and you know, try and align with the overall purpose. So it was, it was very coincidental when I saw that the theme of today's Shritish was also in line with the kind of philosophy that we have at National Charity Network. Um, so I want to start with um, some Q&A, okay? 
Um, how many of you, and of course I know that you are in Bhuvaneshwar, it could be in different quantums, but how many of you in the last one month have made a purchase uh, on an app, whether it's an Amazon, Flipkart, Swiggy, Zomato, Ola, Uber, more than once? Great. Now we are going to start with that note that we made a couple of purchases, and it was Diwali as well, right? So a lot of purchases in, all, in Amazon and all these uh, places. So uh, imagine the number of times that uh, the delivery boy had to come to your place and deliver. And how did they come? Scooby, bike. What were they using? Petrol, diesel, right? Um, so we are living in this world which unfortunately or fortunately, we have everything in the click of a button in our mobile. Uh, can you uh, promise me that for the next one month, you are not going to pick up your phone, um, uh, or you are going to pick up your phone only to dial your parents, and nothing else. Can you promise me? No? no? Okay. <laughs> So with that note, I'm going to start with the sustainability chapter. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I wanted to tell you is uh, about the real stories which are happening behind us. Um, let's look at all the companies. The company survives because we have consumers, and they also survive because they have investors. So let's look at the consumer side of the story. Um, McKenzie did a five years um, study over consumers who were purchasing consumer packaged food. And they found that there has been an increase in demand for food, cosmetics, and household you know, products where there were ESG claims, which actually means that consumers like us were buying those. With, what do we mean by ESG claims? It means that in the packaging they wrote eco-friendly or they mention not tested in animals or maybe biodegradable or you know woven or it is early and all of that right and the companies which were making those ESG claims had made 28 percent cumulative growth over other companies which did not make ESG claims Sure, those are going to come after me, Professor Andrew, the faculty advisor, and Ms. Bobby Patnai, who is going to set the context for today's deliberation. So we'll dwell on this more. I, as administrative head of this university, at times I do wonder, I want to pose this as a question for you. At times, it looks like in adapting to sustainable practices, it's getting to be more costly. For example, the solar panels that we have all over our terraces. When you calculate the cost benefit, we are still not breaking even. I'm talking about Reduce reduction of carbon print, carbon footprint. The money that you spend for such an exercise, and therefore, 
the sustainability of the sustainable practices is, is, is itself posing a big, big challenge. And this is where we have to come up with more and more solutions that are sustainable in themselves first. 